this question has to do with this thing called emotional EMF. Um, it doesn't directly tie into Faraday's law, but it is a phenomenon, and most textbooks talks about it in relation to Faraday's law. And you'll see in the next question why that is. If anything, emotional EMF is much more related to magnetic forces, and qualitatively somewhat similar to the Hall effect. Remembering how the Hall effect means talks about how we have some charge. Let's use positive charge just for simplicity, so we don't have to do that mental flipping all the time. Which, because of the current flowing through, has a certain drift speed. And when you have a moving charge, given that you have a magnetic field perpendicular to it, using the right-hand rule, you get that you'll get some force in the magnetic field, which then causes a buildup of positive charges on the one side, and a depletion of positive charges on the other side, which then creates a voltage that will go into equilibrium when the electric field here creates an electric force that is exactly opposite to the magnetic force. That's a Hall effect, where the motion of the charges is due to the current. Emotional EMF is, we don't have a current, but we physically move the wire itself. Then all the charges inside the wire gets to move with the wire, and if you again expose this thing to a bunch of magnetic fields, again by the right hand rule you're going to get a magnetic field that points downwards, and again you're going to collect some positive charges on the one end and some negative charges on the other end, until you create an electric field which creates an electric force that cancels out the magnetic field, blah blah blah, so that you can actually measure the voltage difference between the two ends, and that's what we call the emotional EMF. And you can see it's very very similar to the Hall effect, where you have this balance of electric and magnetic field. The only difference is the Hall effect has the velocity given by the current, which gives each charge a certain drift speed, whereas motion EMF is we physically move the entire wire itself so that every charge in the wire moves at a certain speed that we give it. So in terms of the equation then, what we know is at equilibrium, your magnitude at least of your electric and magnetic force is the same. So we have QV cross B is equal to Q times E. And most often, we will set this up such that V is perpendicular to B, so that this is just QVB is equal to QE cross cross, similar to other situations we've seen. But then it's difficult to measure electric field. It's much more easier to measure difference in voltage because we can just bust out a voltmeter, tap both ends, and we find out how big that voltage is. And in the context of this chapter, they like to call this the EMF again. So that's why it's motional EMF. But really, again, EMF is voltage in most sense of the word. And so what do we know about voltage in electric field? We can relate them using this lovely integral here with the negative sign. Of course, here, again, we already know how all the direction works out, so we're just talking about magnitude here. And the distance we're talking about is, it's a little messy over there, so we draw the rod again, we have some positive, we have some negative, we have your electric field going this way, and if we want to integrate, say this is zero volts, and we want well, this is the voltage over here, that's a positive, so we want to start integrating from the zero upwards, and we'll say DL all the way along, and the electric field is uniform the whole way through and parallel to my DL, so this is just E times the overall L. And because they are opposite, they give you they cancel out that negative side. And so this gives us that my EMF is E times L. E being V times B, that gets us quote unquote my emotional EMF formula. But really the only thing you really have to remember is the starting point. So that's the idea behind motion EMF, and let's just finish the question. So first, they're going to break this up for us a little bit, a little step by step. Hopefully they'll let you go through the whole derivation again and think about what is actually happening rather than just simply applying the final formula. So A, they're asking about what is the magnetic force on the electron in the rod. Probably because they just say force, magnitude, and direction. 
uh, we know that the magnitude of the force is Q V cross B in terms of magnitude and because V is perpendicular to B as you can see here it's just Q V times B and the direction of course is using the right hand rule this is an electron by the way so it's a little negative charge so Q V goes the other way don't forget that Q V goes the other way into the page and so the force must be downwards in this case subbing it in this is take absolute value sign so that and we're moving at 5 meters per second and the B is 0 0.25 Tesla and we get that number for the force making some space uh, let's finish this off this is now downwards because we're talking about FB so to find the electric field in the rod we can know that the electric force in the rod is exactly opposite to the magnetic force which we found out already this is equal to QE so then we can get the electric field simply by taking my force flipping it then dividing by Q taking out my elementary charge as an electron but here we're gonna preserve I guess my sign convention this being down so my magnetic field also goes down because of the negative charge but the number here is 1.25 newtons per coulomb as it turns out really it's just this part back here does that make sense well double check if my electric field goes down for negative charge my electric force goes up and they do counter each other great now that we have the electric field we can find the potential difference by doing this lovely integral and we already talked about how the electric field should be uniform inside so this is simply e times l we already got the e we multiply by the l which is 25 centimeters so 0.25 meters 0 0.3 volts or thereabouts and that's the process of working out this motionly emf in part d just as an application of the derived result we worked out that delta v as a magnitude anyway is equal to v times b times l given everything is perpendicular and so they want the speed so we take the one volt divide by again my 0.25 tesla multiply by 0.25 meters and that should get us 16 meters per second so motional emf